Hi everyone, I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video, but I want to spend some time today to talk to you about what it's like to live with Smokey. And I think the best way to do so is to answer some general questions that a lot of you have about African Greys. I do want to caution you though that um, in this video, my responses are going to be really honest. And um, I'm not here to appease anybody. So if you guys are easily offended, you might want to watch another video. Um, second, I want to also mention that while um, I answer some of these questions, you guys need to consider that my responses are based solely on my experience with Smokey. So um, the limitation of this video is that every individual bird is going to have their own individual personalities. So what I say about Smokey might not be completely true when it comes to um, every single African Grey as individuals. African Greys are extremely intelligent, and um, I don't think this video or any video is going to do um, African Greys justice in just demonstrating how intelligent they really are. And in all honesty, when I first got an African Grey, I was really skeptical about um, you know just how intelligent some people make them out to be. But um, when you guys live with these animals, you really develop you know this um, understanding of just how intelligent these creatures are. But to truly demonstrate how intelligent these birds are, I want to give you guys some examples of things that Smokey does that just really blows my mind. For example, um, a while ago, I used to go out to her aviary and find that her water bowl would always be really, really dirty because there's a bunch of food inside. And um, at first, I just thought that she, you know, she was like taking her food and just um, putting it inside her water bowl and just leaving it there for fun. But um, eventually I came out one day and I actually saw something that really just blew my mind. She was actually taking some of her uh, pellets, dunking her water bowl, and she was, she was actually just sitting there waiting for a couple uh, seconds before she would pick one up out of the water bowl one by one to eat it. So um, in my opinion, you know, she, what she was doing, she, she had figured that the pellets were a little bit hard so to kind of change around their texture, she learned that by dunking it in water, she can kind of soften up the pellets to eat it afterwards. Another thing that she did, um, which kind of blew my mind, was she kind of went down and her, in her aviary, her um, food bowl is kind of located towards the bottom of the aviary. Well, not really the bottom, but more towards the lower part of the aviary. And one day, I actually caught her um, picking some of these food up, walking up, to a really high part of her um, aviary, and she would actually dunk all of her food onto um, a, t a surface of one of her toys. She would then just proceed to pick one up one by one and just eat it from there. And um, the reason why she did that, obviously, is because a lot of birds feel more comfortable being in a really high spot because it makes them feel secure. Now, the part that really um, kind of struck me as, man, this, these birds are really intelligent, is that she kind of figured out that she can actually pick up her food bring it up to a high area and kind of use her um, toys as kind of like a surface to kind of place the food on. So um, without a doubt, one thing that I learned about African Greys, and you're going to learn really quickly if anybody has an African Grey, is that they're extremely intelligent. That's um, something I wouldn't even argue with. African Greys are extremely different from any other bird. And if you were to compare an African Grey and like an Amazon parrot, there are so many differences that I can list for you. But um, for the purpose of keeping this kind of short and concise, one of the biggest differences that I notice about African Greys and Amazons is um, Amazons are really e easily excitable. For example, if you guys play music, or even if there's a, a new person around that an Amazon likes, they'll usually just flare up their tails, their pupils dilate, their wings are held away from the body, they start strutting around. Um, so in that sense, some people find Amazons to be really physically engaging. Now that's not to say though that African Greys are not engaging. They're really engaging, but they're engaging in a really different way. Um, for example, if you're teaching an Amazon how to talk, and if you're talking to an Amazon, they'll usually get really excitable, their body language will show that. Whereas when you're talking to an African Grey, and when I talk to Smokey, she's going to just kind of sit back and just watch. So they're really observant. African Greys are really observant animals. And in some cases, people um, kind of think, well, is my bird really listening? Is he really learning? Because all he does is just stand there. Well, when your African Grey is um, standing there, what you might not notice is he's actually paying really close attention to everything you're doing, even though his body language doesn't necessarily say that. So um, with an African Grey, if I'm talking to Smokey, she'll just kind of stand there, she'll watch me, she'll listen. But in a couple days, 
whatever I'd say to her, she might actually just repeat those phrases days later. And I'll be like, hey, she really was listening after all. Um, another major difference is since Amazons are really easily excitable, um, sometimes when Amazons are really, really um, excited, they can bite even their owners and even people that they really, really love. But with an African Grey like Smokey, once that you build up enough trust with an African Grey, they will never, um, no matter what, they'll never bite you. And I'll give you guys an example. No, no matter what I do to her, no matter if I pet her, if I take her foot, flip her upside down, even if I just hold her and make her feel really uncomfortable, and even if I pull her wing up to examine her wings, even if I um, kind of just touch the bottom of her tail, examine it, even if I hold her, and right now she really wants a head scratch, and I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna talk about that later, about just how affectionate you know African greys are. But um, even if I, no matter how I hold her, sideways, upside down, even if she feels uncomfortable, Smokey will never bite me. So I have complete 100% trust in um, Smokey. And I think the same is vice versa. But again, um, don't expect that if you guys go out and purchase an African Grey and you bring one into your home, that they're going to automatically be like Smokey. Because the honest truth is, I spent a lot of time, and um, I don't think the videos do it enough justice, but I literally spent a lot of my time working with her to get her to become um, very trusting of me. Another major difference that I see between African Greys and many other birds and it's not just between you know, African Greys and Amazons, this is between African Greys, Macaws, Cockatoos, and all other birds, is that African Greys, even though um, once you build up that trust with them, they become really trusting, it's very difficult and it takes a lot of time to build up trust with an African Grey. Um, what I found is that an Amazon, a Cockatoo, a Macaw, they, um, it's, it's a lot easier, in a sense, for me to build up trust with these birds. But with an African Grey, it'll take a lot of time. When you build a trust with an African Grey, you really gotta break down the steps and work with them very, very slowly. All right, a lot of people are gonna get mad with me on this, but um, the question that a lot of people hear about African Greys is, do they become one-person birds? And are they more likely to become one-person birds? And a long time ago, I didn't believe this because I, um, with my experience with Amazons and macaws and cockatoos, I found that most Amazons, cockatoos, and macaws can um, relatively easily become accustomed to being handled by other people. But um, so I thought, you know, that with African greys, if you socialize them while they're young, they'll become, you know, accepting to a lot of different people. I socialized Smokey when she was only weeks old. I socialized her really well to a lot of people. And at the very beginning, she became really trusting and she allowed a lot of people to handle her. However, once she reached um, about one year old, she just decided that, hey, I'm the only one that she's going to trust. And some people, when they come up to her, they did, she didn't bite them before, but now she would actually bite them. So um, what I found is that there is some truth, at least in my opinion, that African Greys can become one-person birds. Okay. Now, here's the thing, though. Um, I think that, as of now, there is not enough research, and there actually isn't any research at all, to kind of back up whether or not African Greys are one-person birds. So a lot of this is just based on anecdotal evidence. So um, what I think is that whether or not your African Grey becomes what? a one-person bird, or whether or not they're really socialized with a lot of people, it might actually, in all honesty, have to do with gender differences. And um, I don't think that um, we have enough inf um, information or evidence right now to kind of um, decide whether or not male African Greys might become more or less one-person birds than females. But I think that is something that, as parent owners, we might have to um, kind of discuss about. So even though, the thing is, even though Smokey won't allow some people to pick her up, and especially if a stranger comes up and tries to pick her up, she won't bite them. In a sense, she is more um, accepting of me than other people. I have, and you guys can check out some of my videos on my channel, there are ways that you can get your African Grey to become accustomed and accepting of other people. So with me, I'm okay with her not allowing strangers to pick her up. But I want her to know that if strangers are around, that it's not okay for her to attack them. And I want her to know that if I, um, for example, ask her to step up onto somebody else's arm, I want her to know that she can trust me in stepping up onto somebody's arm. 
So there are ways of getting your acting great, even though they might be um, less accepting of other people. There are ways to get them to become um, accepting and trusting of you enough so that you can kind of place them on somebody else. And again, I have videos on that on my um, channel, so if you guys want to check that out, it's already on my channel. All right, so the next question that a lot of people ask is, do they talk? And what are their talking abilities like? African greys are known to be one of the best, if not um, the best, talking bird um, in the world. And with Smokey, Smokey, come here. Why don't we demonstrate this? Good. And with Smokey, I can say that she is a very fast learner. Um, most African greys, when I read um, before I got Smokey, most African greys start talking at about two uh, years old. Smokey started talking when she was only about five to six months old. So the thing about African greys and talking that I found to be really interesting is this. Some birds reach an age where they kind of just slow down and they don't really learn that many more words. African greys will learn words throughout their whole life. And even today, Smokey, turn around. Hey, can you turn around? Smokes, what you doing? African greys will learn words every single day and they're going to learn it throughout their whole life. So um, Smokey talks a lot. And um, she speaks on cue as well. So, Smokey, what's your name? My name is Smokey. Good. Can you give me a kiss? Meow. Give me a kiss. Good. Can you do a kitty cat? Meow. Good. What do you think about a skunk? Yeah, a stinker. Good. Are you a birdie? Are you a birdie? And she even responds to me sneezing. Ah, chew. Bless you. Thank you. What a good bird. There you go. So, that's just some examples of some things she says. Of course, she says a lot more. And the thing about African greys is that not only, th not only do they talk, but they can make, uh, mimic to almost exact perfection. And um, Smokey does like a little knocking sound. Smokey, can you knock? Knock. Smokey, who's there? All right, there you go. Well, one day, guys, when I came home, um, I, was actually, I actually locked my keys inside my uh, house. So I was kind of knocking on the door, and what freaked me out was once I knocked on the door, I heard the door knocking back. So um, it kind of freaked me out at the moment because I never thought, you know, that's, that it was Smokey. So uh, later on, I kind of figured out it was Smokey, but before that, it kind of freaked me out. Smokey also says hello, and she says it in many different uh, voices. So um, they can talk really, really well, but they can also mimic to almost like exact perfection. Smokey, can you go back? Go ahead. Good. And while we're on the subject of talking, I think the best way, if you guys are tra trying to um, teach your birds how to talk, is to teach them by talking to them the way you would a, a child. Yeah. Um, I know that some people would look at their bird and just kind of repeat the same word over and over. I find that to be not really effective because after a while, the bird kind of just zones out and thinks as whatever you're saying as background noise. But if you're talking to the bird in a meaningful way, like every time you walk through the door and you say hello to your bird, they kind of connect that, hey, whenever the owner comes, they say hello. So by building meaning with these words, the bird actually becomes engaged in the learning process and they learn to talk much more quickly. What I was not prepared for when I got Smokey was um, I heard that a lot of African greys are really kind of like aloof. They don't really like the kind of interaction that co uh, cockatoos or macaws enjoy. Smokey, however, completely contradicted that notion. Well, I call Smokey my little cockatoo, and um, the reason why I do that is because she is extremely affectionate. Uh, she loves scratches, and um, the thing is, there are times, you know, like, like humans do, where she doesn't like affection, and when she doesn't, she kind of just shows me through her body language by kind of like pushing my finger away. She doesn't bite me, but she kind of just pushes my finger away. So there are times when she likes affection, there are times when she doesn't. But overall, I would say she is a very affectionate bird. Extremely cuddly. And um, everything that I've seen people do with Amazons, with macaws, in terms of, you know, head scratches, um, with them enjoy being petted, Smokey enjoys it the same exact way. So. So with the whole uh, misconception about and the whole myth about African greys being really independent, not really enjoy being uh, petted, not, being, uh, not enjoy being scratched, I think all of that really is essentially a myth. Because Smokey, as you guys can see here, she loves affection. She loves being handled, she loves being touched. 
all over. What a good bird. There you go. Okay, grab my finger. There you go. Can you go back? Okay, you can go on my shoulder. Okay. Alright, another misconception that a lot of people have, and the biggest myth out there, is that African Grey is a really clumsy bird. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with um, people who clip the birds way too young. Now, if you guys watch my channel, if you guys are keeping up with my videos, you kind of know my stance about wing clipping. But um, in a, no matter what you do, I think it's um, you, you shouldn't clip an African Grey's wings too early on. That's because um, they need to learn how to fly because that really helps to build up not only their self-confidence, but it helps them to really learn how to keep uh, balance. It helps them to develop really um, important motor skills that are essential to um, their function as, you know, a bird. So I think the biggest and most important piece of information that um, everybody needs to uh, know before getting an African Grey is this question here. A lot of people think that African Greys, because of what they read online, they heard that African Greys are really independent birds. So I, I get so many emails from people and so many messages asking, is it okay for me to get an African Grey if I work um, for most of the day? Because I heard that African Greys are really independent, so is it okay if I just fill their, uh, their cages up with toys? And I would say, you should never get a bird if you guys aren't willing to spend the time to interact with them. And um, here's my take on not only owning a bird, but any kind of animal, whether it's a dog or um, even a hamster. These animals don't ask to, to come live with us. We bring them into our homes. And because we made the decision to bring them into our lives, I think we're ultimately obligated to give them the best quality of life that we can give. Because after all, it's us who um, decided to bring them into our lives. So with this being said, I also want you guys to understand that African greys, like every other parrot, lives in a very large flock in the wild. And um, in the wild, it's very unnatural to find any parrot, let it be an African grey, a cockatoo or a macaw, or even a budgie. It's very unnatural to find them um, by themselves in the wild. Most often, birds who are found in the wild by themselves are often sick, they're very old, and they're very easily prone to attack by predators. So in captivity, what this means is that when a bird is by themselves for long periods of time, it causes distress. Um, it causes distress because they don't feel secure. They don't feel that security from um, being around the flock. So even with an African Grey, and I can tell you right now based on my interaction with Smokey, my experience with Smokey, they are not independent birds. Um, now she can, and I, I teach Smokey to learn how to be independent during certain parts of the day. But you shouldn't expect your African Grey, or any bird for that matter, to spend the majority of their days occupying their own time while you're away at work. So I don't think it's okay for you to just spend a one or two hours a day interacting with your bird. They need more time than that. And if you guys aren't willing to put in the time in um, interacting with your birds, uh, get, another, get another pet or you know, just wait until you guys have enough time in order to do so. I also want to mention that no matter how many toys you guys put in your bird's cage, you're, you can't expect an African Grey, Smokey, come here, you want to scratch? You can't expect an African Grey or any other bird to spend like eight hours a day chewing on a block of wood. You can't expect them to be in their cages for like the whole day um, shredding up, you know, any kind of toys that you put in for them. Um, no matter how many toys you put in, no matter how different the toys are, your bird is eventually going to become bored of those toys because what they really need is social interaction. And that's really what's um, going to keep your bird mentally stimulated, is that so social um, interaction that they have with you every single day. All right, everyone, so we approached our last question for the day. And um, the last question that many people might be asking is, would I recommend an African Grey for a beginner? You guys might have noticed that if um, you guys ask me what bird do I recommend for a beginner, I generally don't feel comfortable answering that question because I feel that every single bird, no matter how small, like even a budgie or a parrotlet, they all have their own needs. 
And um, here's the best and most concise way you can go about in answering this question that you have. I don't think that um, there is really such a thing as a beginner bird, and I don't think that it would be okay for me to recommend you get like a cockatiel or a conure as a beginner bird, because by suggesting that you get that as a beginner bird, it's in a sense kind of hinting at people that, hey, get the conure first and the cockatiel because they are disposable, and you can eventually just add more and more birds to your collection. I think that's not the way to go about doing it. I think that um, in essence, there is no age that, some, that kind of qualifies somebody for owning or um, buying a parrot and you know, kind of living with the parrot. Age isn't the deciding factor. I think the deciding factor is really um, knowledge. And um, the more knowledge you build in understanding the needs of these birds, that's essentially what's going to determine how successful you are in su successfully getting your bird acclimated to living in your home and having a successful relationship with that bird. Now with that said, I don't feel it is adequate for somebody to go online and do research on a bird and feel that they have enough information to go out, purchase one, and kind of um, take care of a bird. I don't think also that it's adequate for somebody to read stuff online, watch videos about um, African greys or parrots, and feel that they're um, knowledgeable enough to go out and purchase a bird and um, keep one in their homes. I think real knowledge must come from not only um, research, not only with, um, you know, videos are, are good, They're, they can supplement your learning, but to truly understand what it takes to take care of these birds, you need experience, and that experience comes from, you know, um, interacting with birds that you guys see, uh, maybe at pet stores, interacting with birds, maybe um, from volunteering at a bird shelter and getting first-hand um, knowledge on what it takes to not only um, clean up, not only what it takes to feed, but also what these birds are capable of. And um, if you guys go into owning a bird unprepared, it's going to be a complete nightmare. You're going to end up hating birds.